We're here at Oshkosh and we have a new arrival on the field. Not an entirely new airplane because I got to see this in Europe actually, but very few Americans have seen it unless they've traveled to Europe until today. It's still opening day at Oshkosh. I'm Dan Johnson and I'm talking with a couple of fellows here that have to do with this airplane. To my right is Dion Lombard. He is the U.S. importer of this aircraft. And to my left is Paolo Silvestrini. Right. Or pretty close anyway. Pretty close. <laughs> Not too bad for a first try. So welcome to Oshkosh with the new FX-1. Dion, tell me a little bit of, just give a basic description of the airplane for us. Well, we have a, a special light sport which is factory built. As you know, uh, it, a special light sport is factory built. This is the first one in the US. As you can see, the tail number is on already. Uh, this aircraft is the fourth generation of the similar design that was tube and fabric six years ago and they sold over 200 of these kit planes all over the world and some in the US and the main structure is uh, welded steel tubing and also carbon fiber skin. I do see some uh, probably out of camera view here surely out of camera view there's some weldments down in here so this may look like a carbon fiber airplane but those are just uh, shells over, over structure, is that correct? Correct, yeah. All right. It's been very well tested for strength and they've added a lot of improvements uh, strength-wise, drop test, uh, wing loadings, and uh, upgrade of the engine, you know, bigger engine and better cooling and better handling, uh, different control options, center stick or side uh, you know, side, what do you call it, side yoke. Okay, so this is this is a, this is one option. I yes. love this. It's a side stick, yeah. and obviously both sides have one on the outside, and your throttle hand goes to the center. But there's another choice beside this. Yeah, the stick between the legs. Okay, uh, and the yeah. stick in the more conventional yeah. joystick spot. Yeah. Okay, this is very nicely executed, though. I like this. Uh, and some people will say this is maybe easier to get in because Correct. you can come underneath this instead of yeah. having to straddle that joystick. This is pretty much turn around, sit down, and get in. Yeah, actually uh, I have to comment the fact because when I went to uh, see the first demo one a year ago, I had a hard time getting in and they listened to their customers and they made the center console narrower and the seat slides all the way back and I had a guy in here this morning of six foot four. And you can just close it briefly. I got it. Okay, so now now, as the camera probably can see, I've got my arm on an armrest here, which is blocking the uh, door latch, so you wouldn't inadvertently do that. It's also a grip handle, I see. Uh, but this is this is quite roomy in here. You and I are both about average size, but we're not even close to one another. So you can open the door again, Dion. And De the airplane now. I asked you for a description of how the airplane is constructed these days. The, the new the new version that we're seeing here, the FX1 now. Tell me a little bit about its construction. Well, as I said, it's a tubular frame and uh, it's uh, totally assembled and test flown at the factory. And then we just take the wings off and the propeller and we put it in a shipping container and it can fly the next day. Okay, so it's ready to fly, but is it carbon fiber nose to tail on the exterior Correct. components? Correct. And, and the skin, the, the wings are uh, metal. Okay, and the wings are all metal and the uh, control surfaces, at least on the ailerons Correct. that I can see, Correct. they're all yeah. metal. Correct. So this is a long lasting aircraft here. This, this is, is a not plane a that you can repair very easy. The whole skin outside, you can remove it in an hour and a half and you can expect every weld. It looks like it's going a million miles an hour just sitting here. <laughs> so what does it really go? Well, uh, 180 knots cruise is not uh, un, un, uh, um, can I put it unrealistic. 118 knots. Mm -hmm. Okay, so right near the top of the category yep. for light sport. Yeah. And also a nice feature is they, they use the E-prop propeller on this. I saw. Which is very, very lightweight. It's probably the weight of a sandwich. But the thing is uh, carbon fiber hub. So very, very well balanced, very little vibration. And if you combine that with a fuel injection, it runs like a sewing machine. Well, this whole aircraft is quite contemporary then with extensive use of carbon fiber on the exterior, uh, very modern engine, the, the latest for Rotax in this particular configuration, modern prop. Uh, it it, it kind of hit feels like they've hit all the points. It at all. Looks like visibility would be quite good. If you if you turn you can see also the, the tail. Oh, is that right? Yes. Just a little bit, but Oh yeah, right. I can actually turn around and see the mm. tail. So yes. the shape of the fuselage and the big window surface is really working it's a, well. It's almost three hundred degrees of full vision. You get a helicopter feeling in it from the front. Yes. It's like so much vi uh, visibility. Yeah. If I said, Wow, this is this is just what I've been looking for 
I want one, but I know I don't want this one because I want. You can have one. Three I want weeks it somehow from now. different. How long? If you decide at the show, three weeks. Three weeks. Really? After the three weeks, uh, they sold quite a few to Israel. Okay. Uh, after the next one, the third one would be January. I see. Okay. Well, even January now, mm. we're we're already getting on to be late summer, uh, and so that's a pretty reasonable time for most of these companies out here to deliver mm. a custom. I want this instrument. I mm. want that paint mm. job. Whatever. Um, so that's not too far yeah, off. But you've got another one already coming. After January, it will be one a month, and they're going to bump it up to two a month early in the year. Cool. How many people working at the factory, Paulo? Uh, at the moment, we are eight people okay. all together, and I think that in the, in the next future, we need uh, more couple of workers. For example, all this carbon fiber that I see everywhere, are you making this in the factory yourself or are you having someone else no, make it? No, no, we do all by ourselves. All in-house. Yes. Okay, so in all in, everything, everything I, I see is I all made in-house. I, I mean, so. not instruments and tires, yeah, of, of course, course yeah. but, but all the construction yeah, of the basic yeah. airframe. We design all the molds, we, we do the carbon fiber by ourselves, and we do the, the metal structure by ourselves. I've been to the factory uh, to look at the uh, production facilities, and it's as clean as a hospital. It, I was very impressed. Is that right? Yeah. Excellent, excellent. That's always a good sign. Mm -hmm. Somebody that takes the care to clean up their tools yeah. probably <laughs> built the airplane right too, I always figure. <laughs> okay, so not too long in the delivery time then, Dion. Uh, but it's, this is a big country here in the United States, uh, and, and uh, you're off on one side or the other of it, it seems. Uh, are you going to use some other dealers to help you move some more of these airplanes once the production permits well, such we, things? Well, uh, we actually uh, opened the office in Florida as well, so you've got Fullerton and you've got Florida. In California, California. And, and, and Florida. I have some agents that I'm working with, but we don't want to get guys involved uh, that just want a cheap airplane and never come back to buy one. So right now I'm hands on on most of the um, negotiations and we have some very qualified people that will fly in to help with deliveries and uh, uh, Pete also flew this aircraft in Italy. Uh, our CFI. Ah, yes, yes, yeah. And you went over there with one of your yeah. uh, compatriots and yeah. he flew the airplane. And he'll be he flew the airplane quite a bit, He right? flew it quite a bit and he'll be at tomorrow, so there's more feedback from him as well. But okay, he was great. very impressed, yeah. Okay, so right now we've got 912 IS on it. Uh, the Rotax company has been uh, coming out with their 915, which even more horsepower, which I'm sure this airplane doesn't really need any more power, but people love more power. So is there a plan downstream to have that engine as well? Definitely. We just want to get finalization of the FA rules. And this can take the stress because this airframe, the, the wing loading and the testing that I've seen is unbelievable. Okay, yeah, that's yeah. one place yeah. I was going to that is yeah. you can't just put a big engine, a, a mm -hmm. much bigger engine, a much higher horsepower engine on without having the airframe be ready for yeah, that. It's, and it's already it's, ready for it's that. Great if for I can that. say, sure, our, sure. our engine mount is also tested for the 915. It is. Okay, great. So it's all it's 915 ready when the regulations are ready mm. and when That's the production is too much information for us. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> really. It's, it's there yet. Okay, there's one area we didn't look at in the back of the airplane, and that is the luggage area. T tell me a little bit about how much luggage you can put back there. Uh, you've got 11 kilos per side, so there's 22... 22... Uh, 22... Pounds. For each side. Each side, yeah. Each side, yeah. Four. Yeah. In the back. in the middle. And on the we back as well, the shelf. Ah, yeah. you've got a little space right yeah. here yeah. that you can get at in co yes. in flight. Yes. And then uh, with some nice baggage doors. Is yes. a baggage door on each side, yes. is there not? Yeah. Yes. Okay. And uh, I can't see that from here. No, you won't. <laughs> There's a bucket. But, yeah. so you can, but you can put bags in back there and 11 yeah. kilos per side? Yes. There's a door outside of a lock. Right. Mm. Okay. And you can lock that mm -hmm. as well. So, okay. That's great. Well, that's a lot of information about the airplane. Um, I suppose it's a little early for experimental light sport. There are some very nice features of extra ah, do door okay. locks and oh, also yeah. extra ventilation there and in the doors, so it's well ventilated. Oh yeah, okay. So I noticed when I pulled the door open, it kind of wanted to hold up here. That is, that's because it's, of this yeah, latch? Yeah. Okay. So right in front of my hand here, the camera extra can probably latch, see there's yeah. a red knob and that's part of assuring that the, w that the door stays closed once it's the latched. Yeah, yeah. So two, two, mm -hmm. two latch points on the door. Mm -hmm. Okay, great. All right, Dion, let's, uh, let's go to where people find out more and how they can discover more information. Where do we send them on the web to find more about FX1? Well, uh, they could uh, contact me on my website and there's a link to the aircraft website and the factory website. Okay. 
flylightsportca.com. Okay, flylightsportca.com. Very good. And uh, do you have a website for Innova, Innova Aviation? Yes, of course, uh, www.innovation.com. Okay, very good. And you can find more about this airplane. I have reported on this and all kinds of affordable aviation. That's available on bydanjohnson.com. Thanks for joining Paolo, Dion Lombard, Thank and myself you, here at AirVenture. You're welcome. You're welcome. <laughs>